Well, hello there, and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson, we're going to discuss the structure of the atom. Now, the structure of the atom has been elucidated over the course of many decades and centuries by such notable scientists as John Dalton, J.J. Thompson, Ernest Rutherford, Erwin Schrodinger, and many others. But the basic atomic structure that scientists have come up with is something like this. Now, the atom itself is very tiny. It only has a diameter of around 10 to the negative 10th meters. So keep in mind, that's like saying 0.0000000001 meters, or it's about a billionth of a meter across. Now within this already extremely small atom, there is another part called the nucleus. And the nucleus has a diameter of only 10 to the negative 14th meters. So it is about 10,000 times smaller than the volume of the atom as a whole. So this illustration is not to scale. If this speck was actually the size of a nucleus, well, I would need another sphere around it 10,000 times larger for the atom, and it wouldn't even fit on the screen. So one way to think about this is let's imagine that atom was the size of a football stadium. And here's beautiful Jordan-Hare Stadium back at Auburn University, where I went to grad school. Now, if this was the size of the atom, well, the nucleus would only be the size of a marble sitting right down here in the center. So most of the atom is actually empty space. And the nucleus is a very, very tiny portion of the overall volume of the atom. Now, within the atom, there are three basic subatomic particles. There is the proton, which we abbreviate P positive, the neutron, we abbreviate N zero, and the electron, we abbreviate E negative. So we call the proton P positive because it, in fact, has a positive charge. The neutron, we give it a zero as a superscript because it has no charge. It's neutral, which is why it's called neutron. And the electron, E negative, because it has a negative charge. So where do these live? Well, in our nucleus here, this is where the protons and the neutrons live. And then surrounding this, we have the electrons. So the electrons are orbiting around the nucleus, similar to the way planets would orbit around a sun. And we'll see in later videos the various orbits these electrons can take. Now in a neutral atom, the number of protons, which are positive, must equal the number of electrons, negative. Because if they were not equal and you had more protons than you did electrons, it would be positively charged. Or if you had more electrons than you did protons, it would have a negative charge. So in neutral atoms, the protons and the electrons must be the same number. Now we'll see in a later video there are things called ions that can have charges. But in atoms they are always neutral and the number of electrons equals the number of protons. Now in terms of mass here, you notice that the protons and the neutrons are very similar in mass. They have a mass of about 1 AMU. And AMU is a unit we use for very small measurements and it stands for atomic mass units. But the protons and neutrons are much more massive than the electron. In fact, the protons and neutrons are about 1,800 times more massive than the electrons. But we said, where do these massive particles live? Well, they live right here in the nucleus. So even though most of the mass is contained in the protons and neutrons, it's not spread out evenly around the atom. It's right here in this nucleus. In fact, one way to think about it is, if you were to consider the protons and the neutrons to have a mass around that of a baseball, just relatively, well, the mass of the electron would only have a mass of around a grain of rice. But where does all that mass reside? It resides right here. So most of the mass is in this teeny tiny speck that only occupies one ten thousandth the volume of the atom. And surrounding it are these little grains of rice that have almost no mass. So going back to our football analogy, if this giant stadium was the atom, where would most of the mass be? It wouldn't be spread out across the atom. It would be down in this little marble speck here in the center. So this means the nucleus must be insanely dense. Well, for comparison, let's just look at a few elements that are commonly thought of as having high densities. For example, lead is very dense, which is why it's oftentimes used to block radiation. Well, lead's density is 11.34 grams in a cubic centimeter. So that means if you had a one centimeter cube of lead and you were to weigh it, it would weigh about 11.34 grams. Well, if you had a one centimeter cube of gold, which is even more dense, 
it would have a mass of 19.30 grams. So again, a bar of gold would be much heavier than a bar of lead. Well, the most dense element that we know is osmium, and its density is 22.59. But all of these densities just pale in comparison to how dense that nucleus is, where now we're taking 99.9% .9 of the mass, and we're compressing it down into 1 ten thousandth the volume. So the density of a nucleus is not 11 or 19 or even 22 and a half. It is between 10 and 100 trillion grams per cubic centimeter. So think about this for a second. It's not 11, it's not 19, it's not even 22 and a half. It's somewhere between 10 and 100 trillion grams per cubic centimeter. So it is just insanely dense because there is so much matter occupying such a teeny tiny volume. In fact, if you were just to try to collect a few nuclei and put them in something as small as a matchbox, the nuclei are so dense that it would weigh two and a half billion tons. So think about that for a second. This tiny matchbox, if you filled it up with nuclei, would now weigh about as much as a billion cars. <laughs> because again, you've crammed so much mass in such a teeny tiny volume. So to summarize, the atom has three subatomic particles. There's the proton, which has a positive charge, the neutron that has a neutral charge, and the electron that has a negative charge. Now in a neutral atom, the number of positive protons is always equal to the number of negative electrons. Well, in the overall structure of the atoms, we found that the protons and the neutrons live in the nucleus, which is in the center of the atom. And then orbiting that are the electrons. So much the way planets orbit the sun, there are negatively charged electrons orbiting a positively charged nucleus. But recall, the protons and the neutrons have about 1,800 times more mass than the electrons. But they occupy this volume that only makes up one ten thousandth of the overall volume of the atom. So it's this weird dichotomy where 99.9% .9 of the mass of the overall atom is contained in one ten thousandth of the volume in this area called the nucleus, which makes the nucleus then very dense. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overview of atomic structure. In our next lesson, we're going to discuss how do you determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons you would find in an atom, and also what happens if you begin to vary the number of neutrons and create things called isotopes. So we'll see you back here next time at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.